Hi everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So, start of another month, hard to believe. <laughs> Working on the garden wall again, the second pass. There will be a total of nine of them, I believe. So, we're starting at uh, about 20 and a half percent. I'm hoping to get a quarter done by the end of this month, but that depends. Yeah. We'll see. I didn't get as much done last month as I was hoping because, yeah, life got busy, so. So, normally, if you've seen me stitch before, I stitch usually my diagonal sloping the other way, but because of the way the colors are sloping because of the picture, I'm kind of just following them and rather than trying to stitch across them. And trying to force them to go the other way. I just find that a little little bit easier. So but still trying to keep from closing in stitches as much as possible when I can. here so yeah trying so I did end up like I said a little bit close in here this one has stitches done on all three sides instead of just two which is what I try to generally stick to but yeah I'm not that hung up about it if it's slightly slightly different I don't mind that 36 I think I may have put oh my goodness where is that envelope? Is it in the wrong? Ah, okay, yes. I was thinking, I've done this color before, so it should be out in my tub, but I put it back in the wrong order. I put it after 498 instead of in front of it, so, so I couldn't find it. Yeah, it's close, but not quite. I used to have a piece of cardboard I would stick between the envelopes so when I pulled one I knew exactly where to, to put it back, but it was another extra step. So I kind of fell out of the habit of it. So that means occasionally I misfile one. I have to go searching for it, but oh well. I find there's still less time spent doing that than taking the piece of cardboard and moving it around, so. Oh my gosh, there we go. Catching other threads in my working thread there, that's no good. So yeah, it is still warm enough for me to go on my walks outside. It was raining a little today, so I kept my hood up. <laughs> but I did go. Yeah, at least half the leaves are down now. Probably be another week or two and they'll all be on the ground. Our leaves fall very quickly here. When I used to live in BC to Lower Mainland, yeah, takes a lot longer. The end of summer stretches out a lot later there, but here, yeah, it's done. Okay. Yeah, so had a bit of a <laughs> excitement, not the good kind, taking uh, my car to the tire shop for the wheel alignment. Yeah, some guy blew a red light and uh, I was following my husband was in his truck and I was behind him and we had the green arrow to turn left, which means the other way has red light. And this guy blew between us so my husband turned left and he blew between us and I barely was able to avoid hitting him. I was not happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that meant he had a red for like a good 10 seconds. It wasn't like it had just changed from yellow, so he really had no excuse. It was a company truck too, but unfortunately I couldn't catch the logo. I was too busy uh, trying to avoid the collision that, yeah. I could see there was a logo, but not what it was. 
so. Ugh. But yeah. That was not fun. I'm sure glad that didn't. Because if he'd hit me at the speed he was going at, would have been the end of my car. That's for sure. Although what would have worried me more is it really would have messed up my neck because, yeah, getting hit from the side, yeah, that's going to give you some soft tissue damage. So, yeah, so as you can see, I'm going a bit out of order here. Just, oops, as I follow this edge. Yeah, I'm not going to be that finicky about not closing stuff in. I try to avoid it, but sometimes it's just no trouble and it's worth, but I still try to sort of stick to growing along from the edge that I've established there rather than kind of, you know, skipping all over the place and leaving gaps because I make more mistakes when I do that. And I often don't catch them quickly either when I do make those mistakes. So makes it even more irritating to try and fix later. Okay, so as you can see I've got some big area here of this light yellow. So I'm gonna kind of alternate, do a little bit of stuff along this edge of those other colors, then a couple rows of this yellow kind of break it up a little bit keeps things interesting and keeps me from getting carpal tunnel. Yeah, so like I said, I was I'm hoping for 25% done. We'll see because there is some bigger blocks of color here, but I believe we're going to get into some more detail work with some flowers as well, but it's kind of a mix half and half, so yeah. However, I don't have any other big projects planned this month like I did last month when I was making my apple juice, so. And there's nobody planning to visit, so. I lost, I would say, at least a quarter of my stitching time last month, so that's why I didn't get as much done as I had estimated. Yeah, so I was inputting my numbers stitched uh, into my spreadsheet, and... Uh, yeah, it's uh, calculating for me to be done, I think, June of uh, 2025 is the estimate. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I don't expect to get it done next year. But the year after, I think, is doable. And then I plan to do Deer Creek after this one is done, which is 200,000 stitches. So a little bit of a smaller, relatively speaking. <laughs> That's why I sometimes like to do a smaller one, like one of RDC's standard sizes, about 60,000 stitches or so. So that's one that can be done in about in less than a year for me. So sometimes I do that, but yeah, currently I pretty much only have huge projects lined up for the moment. Now that I finished uh, Majora's Mask there. Yeah, so I had a friend saying they're, they're saving up to buy games for their Switch. And uh, what do you recommend? And I said, well, I recommend Legend of Zelda, of course. <laughs> And then, yeah, she was asking, like, do I have to play the previous ones? I said, no, each game is pretty self-contained. 
effect. It's often the same basic storyline. So, yeah, you don't have to have played previous ones in the series for it to have made sense. Yeah, we haven't finished uh, Tears of the Kingdom yet. That is a huge game. Okay, so I've got two strands of this color, and I think they're both fairly long. Oh, no, this one's not that long. Okay, so I will use them both. So I'm going to kind of juggle both of them until the shorter one that's up top runs out. These three here with this strand. Ooh. Yeah, so my husband helped me improve my crafting stand a bit. He heard me frustratedly <laughs> swearing as I'm trying to tighten the bolts, so he... Yeah. He could see what the problem was and figure out a way to fix it, so... Yeah. One of the benefits when you marry an engineer. <laughs> so again, yeah, doing a little bit out of order here, but... two strands at once. Yeah, since this is sloping the other way, it just kind of tends to happen and I don't feel like fighting it. The way my clamp worked before, I would spend, you know, 10 minutes tightening it. Then I'd test it and push on the frame to see if it would come out. And it would just, yeah, pop right out. So annoying. <laughs> so then I'd have to loosen the bolts and try it again. And yeah. So he put some special nuts on it, he said, that prevented it from squirting out like that. So that yeah, seems to be much more stable so I'm happy. So I'd like to get one that had like a spring-loaded clamp but can't seem to find anything like that. You would think it wouldn't be such a tough thing to source. There was someone who was using like a bike stand clamp but then they said the problem was it had a bunch of grease and they got it on their project which yeah you really don't want. <laughs> Well, because it was intended for bikes and, you know, grease there is not a problem. But yeah, when you're working with cloth, it definitely is because it does not wash out. Not easily anyway. So I have very little bit of sky left at the very bottom here, but not much. I won't have a lot of blues for a while until I get to the next pass. So, yeah. I don't think I'm going to complete this pass this month. Be nice if I did, but I think that might be a bit, a bit much, so... We'll see as the month goes on. I think by the end of next month, we'll definitely be doable.
that and then this. So it's sloping this way. It's going to start naturally sloping back the other way because of the way this pillar goes. So, yeah. I'll just sort of play it by ear. Fill it in as I go along. Yeah, I was happy to see that the pale colors do seem to still show up okay on camera, so I think if it was pure white on white, we'd have more of a problem. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, things are just... There's going to be some done out of order, I think. It's just unavoidable. And the next pass, I'm going to get to his the peacock's tail feathers, which I'm really excited for. But that's definitely not going to be until partway through next year. we got a ways before then. Yeah, that is all I'm going to get out of this strand. Start a new one. So yeah, there's a little bit of closing in, like I said, like here, it's just unavoidable, but oh well. Yeah, I've seen some where people are really disciplined and they never deviate from their diagonal line, but yeah, I am not. <laughs> not able to do that. Yeah, I was so excited on my firefly place uh, last month. I got to work on a face, <laughs> part of a face. I got to work on Inara's forehead. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be a while before I get to another person. A whole bunch of background to do. the other way so that I can park in that same corner like I always do. So let's see. 
yeah, I think I may actually fill in part of this bit here. Because, yeah, it's going to naturally kind of slope towards here and I can start converting it back to my regular direction. So that's what I'm going to do. So, yeah, I often say the diagonal lines are just a rough guide for me. I stitch whatever makes sense to me at the time. That one. Let's see how long this piece is. Not very. Oh, would help if I tried to actually thread the eye of the needle. <laughs> Not the point. Ooh. Yeah, so I think I'll kind of fill this in to where the next sort of stripe of yellow starts. That'll be a natural break point there. Okay, I think I could do a few more with this strand. I was stitching on 18 count yesterday, so I kind of have to <laughs> readjust to working on 14 count again. yellows. Wrong. It 
here's the fabric. I could tell as soon as I, yeah, as soon as I pulled the thread through, there was too much resistance on it, so. I knew it wasn't right. Needles are magnetized, yeah. They like to stick together. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, pardon me. sleep got all thrown off last night so <laughs> if I yawn that's why mm. That is wrong again. Again, the resistance was more than it should have been if I'd actually come up in the proper spot. Got to swap my ends jars, keeping the different colors from different projects separate for the time being. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting. You can see sort of almost stripes of color from different sections that I was working on. Yeah, my other ends jar is a lot darker from the firefly colors, it's a much darker uh, piece. Lots and lots of black and navy blue and dark gray and yeah. So one of the reasons it's good for me to sort of break it up with other projects, I think that much dark color palette would be a little, oh, a little tough to work on constantly. So, okay.
Oh, look at that. Yeah, I parked that one wrong. Yeah, it's on the wrong side of that grid line. It should be on the other one. Yeah, see, this is one reason why I prefer parking. If I had stitched that, it would have been wrong. And then I would have had to either rip it out or decide whether to leave it there. And this way, it's quite easy to just unpark and repark correctly. Might have been this grid line threw me off because it's not perfectly straight right now because I sew my own on. Oops, they can have a bit of slack, so you gotta be careful for that, especially at the edges. I leave more slack at the edges so that they don't pull and distort the holes. Learned that the hard way with another project, yeah. I kept them taut and then it kind of was too taut and made the holes a little bit bigger. Fortunately, it wasn't too noticeable, but still, prefer to avoid that if I can. Color again, zero three. Ooh. Wow, this piece I saved is super short. It might even be. A little too short. We'll see if I can get the one stitch out of it. Yeah, I think I can. It's going to be a close thing. But yeah, I'm a thread miser. <laughs> oh, that's not going to work. Let me try that again. I want to make sure catches the stitches, but we don't want it to come up through to the right side, because that would not look good. Okay, one more color here. A bright one. This color almost looks like neon. You would think it would be too bright, but when it's blended in with the other colors, it kind of kind of mutes it a bit, so it's not so eye searing. one that I left threaded but it was so short the needle just kind of fell right off.
Sorry. <laughs> Just want to make sure I'm on the correct side of that grid line there. I leave that one threaded, but we'll see. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna check this other one parked here. How long is it? Okay. Actually, I've got a couple of them. Check that one too. Okay. I'm trying to decide where I'm gonna want to park this piece when I'm done with it. But I think I can tell right now. Plan ahead a little. If I have sort of too many in one area, sometimes I will just tie one off, which is what I think I may do here. Almost fell like one. Nope, I think it must have popped free right when I <laughs> pulled it to the surface. That does happen sometimes. Yeah, I can feel with my finger back there it's smooth, so we're good. Okay, so let's just oh darn it. I hate when I do that. Park this here. It'll probably be a while before I stitch with that thread again, so I'm just gonna unthread it. Yeah, 
I don't know where this year has gone. <laughs> October already. Oh, we know it'll be Christmas again. Holy cow. This is the one, yeah, decided I'm going to tie this one off because I have enough other threads parked in the near vicinity. I don't need this one right now. I'll reattach later. And I'm going to draw this one along the back as it's a very bright color. So I don't want the ends popping up through. See the two directions are kind of converging here. Maybe we'll do more of this yellow again. Oh, joy dear. could decide with this yellow to sort of go all the way back up here, but I'm just going to divide it right here. And I'll work my way from up top there later. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I sometimes do the lone ones at the end of the row below so that I can avoid closing stuff in on the next row. just did not want to come up in the correct spot. So that 
is definitely a knot. There we go. Okay, so yeah, I did that yellow one at the end here, so that way I can do these two in a gray. That way when I do this row, I can wrap around here without closing anything in. correct thread there. Let's see if I can get the last two stitches out of this strand or not. Start working out from this edge again, which is sloping the other way. We're kind of, like I said, meeting in the middle there.
strand for this one. Almost at two hundred here. So once I finish these ones that I've highlighted, that'll take me over 200 stitches, and I think that'll be a good stopping place for today. You can always tell by how much confetti there was by how many stitches I get done in the approximate hour session. So some days it's a struggle to make a hundred. You've got a few dozen different colors and <laughs> that hundred stitches. And that works out nicely. The thread also ran out right then. Okay, so here we go, 206, yeah. I think that's where I'm gonna take a break for today. So uh, as usual, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone.